Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about a scary case of an ascending aortic dissection uh, that was missed until the patient got to the cath lab for what everyone thought was a STEMI. The patient is a 65-year-old woman uh, with kidney disease and a history of cabbage who uh, presented to the ED after a sudden syncopal episode uh, at her uh, dinner table. Uh, she was only out for a few seconds, but when she regained consciousness, she had uh, excruciating uh, upper chest and neck pain. Um, in the ED, she was uh, dyspneic and tachypneic, and clearly uh, she looked uncomfortable. Uh, we specifically asked her about back pain or tearing pain, uh, which uh, she denied. The uh, ECG uh, by EMS uh, showed qualifying ST elevations in the lateral leads, but the ECG in the ED uh, just showed sinus rhythm uh, with uh, resolved uh, ST elevations. And there were still uh, infralateral uh, ST depressions. Um, but uh, given her uh, severe ongoing chest pain, uh, I decided to take her to the cath lab uh, emergently. Her uh, cabbage anatomy was unknown to us, but uh, I was expecting to see an acute occlusion of the graft uh, to the circumflex territory. So um, here's my first shot. Um, there is a severe disease in the LED, but there is competitive flow to the distal LED. So uh, the lemograph probably is good. Um, um, there are also uh, collaterals uh, to the RCA, and this uh, tells me that the RCA and probably the graft to the RCA are both occluded or uh, severely diseased. And here's the circ. Um, there is diffuse disease and OM3 uh, is occluded. So I thought, well, that might be the culprit or maybe it is bypassed uh, and there was an acute graft occlusion. And uh, here is another view of the circ. Again, we see a lack of blood vessels and an empty space in the distal circ area. So I switched to a diagnostic JR4 intending to shoot the RCA and find the graphs. And here is my first shot of the RCA. Uh, definitely not something I expected to see or want to ever see uh, in the cath lab, an ascending aortic uh, dissection. So I uh, instinctively yanked my catheter back right away. Uh, you can see the shadow of the aortic dissection on the left side of the aorta here. Uh, we uh, stopped the procedure. Uh, I called cardiac surgery. Uh, remember, we are at a community hospital, so it's going to take a while uh, for them to uh, get her uh, down to the tertiary center. Uh, we got her down to CT, and uh, things uh, did not look great. The uh, radiologist notes that the dissection of the ascending aorta had a entry tear down at the root, uh, primarily along the uh, non-coronary sinus and potentially in the right coronary sinus. And the bad news does not end there. Uh, it also looks like there is at least moderate acute hemopericardium uh, from extension of the dissection into the pericardial sac. And fortunately, the dissection stops in the ascending aorta. It has not involved the great vessels or uh, the descending aorta. And in the meantime, you know, while waiting for the helicopter to get here, I was thinking to myself, did I do this? Did I dissect the aorta with that uh, five French JR4? So um, I did not notice it at the time, but looking at the aorta in this shot of the left system, you see a shadow in the aortic wall. So the dissection was already there. So in retrospect, what probably happened is that the patient had the ascending aortic dissection first and that transiently compromised her bypass grafts, which caused those transient uh, ST elevations and might have also transiently compromised the great vessels, which caused the syncope. In any event, uh, she uh, needed surgery uh, right away. Classically, uh, patients uh, with uh, ascending aortic dissection describe a sharp tearing pain in the uh, chest or upper back, often spreading to the neck. Our patient did not have back pain, um, just upper chest and neck pain. Symptoms can be associated with shortness of breath if the pericardium is affected or syncope and stroke-like symptoms if the arch vessels are affected. Unequal blood pressures in the arms and legs uh, or arms versus legs uh, can uh, also be seen. A few other things to keep in mind. First, uh, if the dissection wraps around the aortic wall and compromises 
the coronary arteries and bypass grafts, patients can present with STEMI, uh, which presumably is what happened uh, with our patient. Uh, second, if the, patient, uh, if the dissection spreads into the pericardium, uh, you can get pericardial tamponade from uh, hemopericardium and you can get uh, cardiogenic shock. Third, uh, if the shape of the aortic root is altered significantly, you can actually get significant acute aortic valve uh, regurgitation. And fourth, if the dissection spreads up and around the aortic arch, you can start getting compromise of the, uh, of the great vessels and, and, and potentially have a stroke. And finally, if the dissection spreads down into the descending aorta, uh, you can start getting gut ischemia as well as acute uh, renal failure. Uh, treatment is emergency surgery. You get the patient there right away. Um, there are some temporizing measures you can take. Uh, blood pressure and heart rate control are very important uh, to reduce the propagation of the tear. Uh, classically, you use an IV esmolol infusion to keep systolic blood pressures between 100 to 120 and heart rate uh, around 60. Uh, pain control is also very important and it will help you control the patient's blood pressure and heart rate. Uh, stop uh, any further uh, anticoagulation. Uh, if the patient is in shock from acute hemopericardium, uh, you may need to uh, perform emergency pericardiocentesis to, to evacuate the blood and alleviate the pressure on the heart. Um, the patient might also need concomitant uh, blood transfusion since they're essentially bleeding out uh, through the pericardium. Uh, mechanical circulator, uh, circulatory support is contraindicated. Uh, no balloon pump or impella. Um, although uh, there are case reports of impella being used uh, in the rare scenarios, uh, this uh, should be avoided in general. Uh, you could end up making the dissection worse uh, or uh, precipitate a uh, frank uh, aortic rupture. So our uh, patient made it to the tertiary center. Uh, she underwent an emergency uh, ascending aorta uh, and a hemi-arch uh, replacement. It was clear to the surgeon that uh, both SVGs were compromised by the dissection. Uh, she underwent a re-implantation of the SVG to the OM and the SVG to the PDA. The uh, lima to the LED uh, was widely patent. Uh, she did well post-op and thankfully uh, had a fairly uneventful uh, post-op course. Uh, she went home with an EF of 40 to 45%, uh, which is her baseline. So uh, the principal take-home message for me, at least, uh, from this case is to consider uh, ascending aorta dissection in a patient with a, a sudden onset severe upper chest and neck pain, especially with an ECG, ECG that is not showing a STEMI. A back pain uh, is not always there. Um, we went over the signs of an aor ascending aortic dissection and discussed how ascending aortic dissection might present like a STEMI or a pericardial tamponade or stroke uh, depending on what vessels and structures are uh, compromised. Uh, it is critical to control pain and blood pressure quickly. Uh, mechanical circulatory uh, support is contraindicated. Uh, treatment is uh, emergency surgery. Thank you for watching.